Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and a bunch of other ones on our channel. We're doing multivariable calculus. We're in chapter two, which is double and triple integrals. Specifically, today we're going to do section 2.3, which is double integrals over polar regions again. And we're just going to do more examples of computing standard polar rectangles, which is an oxymoron as far as I'm concerned, and then general polar regions. Let's do that. Example one, we're given some nasty integrand again, and we want to compute this double integral if R is part of the unit circle. What is this region? We've got a unit, it says the part of the unit circle from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over four. This is the first problem. We need to figure out what that looks like. It's going to give us in the first quadrant, this is zero, and this guy right here is pi over four. Therefore, that tells me it's on the unit circle, which means I am going to get this region is our region R, which is a polar rectangle. What do we get from that? Our bounds. This says that zero is less than or equal to R is less than or equal to one. Theta is less than or equal to pi over four. From this now, we can view that as a polar region and turn this into x squared plus y squared equals R squared. And so x squared plus y squared to the one third or third root is equal to r squared to the one third, which is r to the two thirds. Now I can turn that into the double integral and compute. That says that the double integral over the region r of the third root of x squared plus y squared dA is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 4, the integral from 0 to 1 of r to the two thirds and then r dr d theta. And I notice that I can separate those, so I will. This is inter the integral from zero to pi over four of d theta times the integral using the power rule of r to the five over three from zero to one dr. Now I take the antiderivatives. This gives me theta from zero to pi over four times one over five over three plus one r to the 5 over 3 plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 1. That's supposed to be a 5. That gives me pi over 4 times, right here is my favorite dirty trick, 3 over 3. And then I get 8 over 3 reciprocated, which is 3 over 8 times r to the 8 over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1, which is going to give me pi times 3 over 4 times 8, which is 3 pi over 32. Let's do another one. All right, I'm rewording these from different books or trying to sketch them first and then rewording what they are, and they're much worse in words, so we'll draw that immediately again. What does that mean we have? Compute the double integral of xy where over r, where r is the part of the annulus in the first quadrant with inner radius 2 and outer radius 5. What does that mean? An annulus is a disc with something punched into it or a washer. What we're going to get now is it says the first quadrant again. Then it says the inner radius is 2. There's 2. There's the inner radius to 5, not the scale, 5. And then what we're going to get is that, and that is what we're going to get. And this here is our region R, which is a polar rectangle. From that, what do I get? I get my bounds again from this. This gives me now what? This says two is less than or equal to R is less than or equal to five is my radius. And then it says theta is going from zero to pi over two. Now that I have my bounds, I have the iterated integral in polar form. That tells me that the double integral over r of x, y, d, a is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the integral from 2 to 5 of what? r cos theta, r sine theta, and then r dr d theta. Let's clean that up a little bit. This is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine theta times cos theta d theta times the integral from 2 to 5 of 1, 2, 3, r cubed dr. 
So again, I split it for convenience because they're separated. And then I've already said what the derivative of sine, cos theta d theta, that's correct. So we have a substitution rule in here. Either way, what is this going to give us? Using that substitution in my head, we're going to write this as, this is w, w is sine, then dw is cos theta d theta. Then I have the integral of w, which is one half w squared. W was sine, so this is one half sine squared theta from 0 to pi over 2 times 1 over 4 r to the 4 from 2 to 5. Uh-oh. And then what are we going to get from this? Luckily, one of these is going to go away. This is going to give me 1 half times sine at pi over 2 is 1 squared is 1. And then at 0, I'm going to get 0. So that just gives me 1 half. And then here, I'm going to have 1 quarter times, now what am I going to have? 5 to the 4 minus 2 to the 4, which is 1 over 8 times 625 minus 16, which is 609 over 8. Do one more, we'll do a more general polar region. All right, now we're gonna try and apply this to things. I like to garden a lot, so when I set the sprinkler out there, I get too lazy to go and buy, I don't know, is that the reverse of lazy? To actually go buy it and make it just automatically sprinkler and wet. I like to stand out there and hose. You can vary the radius with your thumb pressure. Right now what we have is we have an automated sprinkler. It does the circle thing. You didn't need the pantomime, you got it anyways. It distributes water in a circular pattern of radius big R. The sprinkler supplies e to the negative R feet, that's feet, of water per hour for distances between zero. We're going to center the sprinkler at the origin, obviously, and then we have a radius of big R. This is the distribution of the amount of water as a function of R and theta. What is the total amount of water it wants to know distributed over the circular radius per hour? Let's find out. First of all, I draw myself a picture to help anyways. I have a sprinkler at the center. It's distributing water in a circular pattern over the whole region, and it distributes water to e to the negative r. What that says is, this is my region, so what are my bounds? Zero is less than r is less than big R, which was given to us, and now it says, zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to two pi because it goes all the way around and now i can view that as a double integral over a region that says that the total volume of water is the double integral zero to two pi the integral from zero to big r of e to the negative r my function and then now don't forget uh, we're going to have to use what r dr d theta now I have a polynomial in R times a transcendental function in R, so I'm going to use integration by parts to solve this integral. I also notice I can separate them, which is often the case. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta times the integral from 0 to R of R e to the negative R dr. This is equal to the first one is equal to 2 pi. And this one is integration by parts. So don't be afraid to do them in steps. I just write it down. I computed that one, got it out of the way. Now I focus on this one. If you can't see it or you haven't memorized the rule, what I now have to do is let W, or sorry, I'm gonna let U equal R, so you do U is dr, and then dB is e to the negative R dr, and so B is going to equal negative e to the negative R, and we are going to get that this is equal to 2 pi times this guy becomes the integral of b times u. So negative r e to the negative r evaluated from 0 to big R plus, because we have minus minus, b du, which is the integral from 0 to r of e to the negative r dr again. However you want to do that, or you can integrate this one now and write that as equals 2 pi negative r e to the negative r minus e to the negative r evaluated from 0 to r. Cleaning this up, 2 pi 1 minus e to the negative r, r plus 1. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and a bunch of others. I'll see you next time.